Hello my friends, this is Dr. Diana and I'm both doctor and patient and I am pretty ill. Today I have on my doctor coat because I'd like to discuss Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, otherwise known as EDS. What is it? What types are there? How to recognize it? It's a great primer for patients or doctors who may not be comfortable with recognizing it. And I know that even I missed it on my own body, first run through. So it's estimated that 90% of us with Ehlers-Danlos are never diagnosed. And we must fix that. So we'll look at the three most common types more closely in the next few videos. But today we'll run through the, the six different types. Now first, Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, or EDS, is a connective tissue disorder, which results in our bodies making faulty collagen, which is the glue that holds our bodies together. It doesn't mean there is no glue, or we would just be little puddles on the floor, but the glue is defective. Think of spaghetti, when you pull it out dry out of the box, and the noodles are straight, and they're close together, and they're all the same size, that is normal collagen. Now think of cooking that spaghetti and stirring it up in a pot and it's all done and it's all garbled and, and there's different holes throughout that's funky looking. That is what our collagen looks like. Now, there are many different types of collagen in the body and depending on the gene that the patient has, it will manifest in different ways. Currently, the common nosology contains six different types. We'll look at those. First, let's look at the hypermobility type. These patients have loose joints, recurrent dislocations, numerous subluxations, many times in one day is not unusual at all. The easiest way I've found to differentiate this group of patients from others is their level of pain. It's usually constant. It can be disabling for them and it can start as early as preschool. There was one patient who said that in, when he was seven years old, he remembered laying in his bed thinking, if this is what it feels like to live, why do so many people want to live a long time? Oh, break your heart. Yeah. Although a patient with another type may have joints that are just as unstable, the hypermobility patient's level of pain will be a million times worse. We're still trying to figure out why this is the case, but if you look in their eyes, you can see the constant pain. Now, next is the classic type which also involves loose joints, tendons, ligaments, dislocations, many subluxations throughout the day, but also involves the skin. Now the skin is very soft and velvety, but it bruises easily and it's stretchy in certain areas. Doctors, you need to check various areas. Don't just look at one spot. Look under their arms, different places. Look at the side of the neck and face, another good place to look. Um, it was missed on me because the doctor didn't look at enough places. Uh, patients are prone to hernias and scars heal poorly, like cigarette paper. Uh, we, he we have delayed healing too, so staples and sutures need to be left in at least twice as long because of that delayed healing. You'll likely see spherules, which are fatty cysts under the skin, scalp, forearms, elbows, shins are a great place to look for those. Now, pisogenic papules are something you as a doctor can see patient will not be able to see this because you have to have the patient stand up and look at the side of their feet and see those pop out. Now this is the type of ehlers danlos my family and I deal with. It's important to know, I want you guys really to know, the autonomic dysfunction, endocrine ab abnormalities, POTS, brain fog, oh, dementia my friends, affects approximately 70% of us. Uh, with the hypermobility or the classic type. We are still trying to figure out why. I have some ideas on that. That is what brought us to our knees. That is what kept me from practicing, kept our son out of school for nearly three years now. Um, so if you have questions on POTS or postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, one of the videos I've covered for you. Uh, next, the vascular type. This is the most dangerous form because it involves very weak vessels and organs that rupture easily. If in doubt, assume a patient has vascular Ehlers-Danlos until it can be ruled out. There's a, a specific genetic test for it, and it causes a mutation in the COL3A1 gene, and that's how it's picked up. Now, vascular patients tend to have a certain look to them that you'll come to recognize. They have kind of a pinched, low nose, thin lips, thin hair, thin skin, very little fat on their face and limbs, almost transparent um, skin on their chest where you can see the blood vessels. Um, they bleed easily. They're prone to uterine and intestinal ruptures. Um, 
and their lifespan is usually shortened, um, about mid-40s is average. They're also hypermobile like the rest of us, but it's especially noticeable in their fingers. Now, Dr. Hal Deeds is researching vascular Ehlers-Danlos, is coming up with some wonderful potential treatments. With his mouse models, he's even learning of medications that are available today that look like they are going to help vascular EDS patients that don't give up. Now, these three types, the vascular, hypermobility, and classic form, it is not uncommon to have that diagnosis shift around as, you, as the doctors are kind of feeling their way through the family history, et cetera, because they are fairly similar to each other in presentation. And don't let that scare you. The kyphoscoliosis type, I, I must mention that, it's, it's much more rare, but it involves joint laxity, weak muscle tone, as do the other types. But with a kyphoscoliosis type, it's so extreme that it's often present in a baby, shown as scoliosis at birth, and it's progressive. So these people are often in wheelchairs before the age of 20. Their eyes can rupture easily, as can their arteries. This type can be diagnosed with a urine test, indicating a deficiency at the lysyl hydroxylase, which modifies the collagen. Now, the arthrochalasia type, another rare type, also involves congenital hip dysplasia, although not vice versa. Not everybody with a congenital hip dysplasia has this type of Ehlers-Danlos, but every single patient with this type, arthrochalasia type, has had a congenital hip dysplasia. It involves severe joint hypermobility, and it can include skin hyperextensibility, easy bruising, tissue fragility, weak muscles, osteopenia, kind of like the rest of us. It can also be diagnosed with a skin biopsy. Finally, the dermatosporaxis type involves a severe skin fragility and bruising. The patients will have lots of redundant skin, almost a acutus laxa presentation. Large hernias are common, the skin is soft and doughy, but that's true with some other types too. Few patients have this type, fortunately. It's autosomal recessive, fortunately, and it is diagnosable through a skin biopsy, another great thing. Now, this is such a quick and dirty run through. I hate to leave it with that, and I'm, I won't. We'll look at those three most common forms one at a time, and I will give you hints and advice about how to identify them. I will reveal some of the, the um, presentations on my own body for you. It's a rare person who is that circus freak you'll find in the textbooks. We've really done ourselves a disservice by showing the extreme patients in the medical textbooks because very few of us are that extreme. We've got to get rid of that perception and make a dent at diagnosing these 90% of patients who are suffering with no diagnosis. We'll start with the bite and scale of flexibility, which isn't perfect, but it's a good place to start in showing how flexible we are. Um, meanwhile, I'll attach an article here um, that was published in the American Journal of Medical Genetics that expands on some of what we've covered today. Thanks for hanging through this one. I know it was a rough one. This is Dr. Diana, both doctor and patient. Let's recreate our world one brain cell at a time if we have to. But I'm here for you. General hugs. Bye.